Good morning, class. Glad to see you. Welcome to Canvas Week. Now that we have some of the technical difficulties ironed out, hopefully uh, this can be a good experience for you. One of the things that I really want for you is to feel comfortable taking online classes because that's an option for you to really further your matriculation at CCP. Taking online classes can help you finish your degree sooner and in a lot of ways it can help you to manage your time between work, family, and your school life. Sometimes when you have an online class it'll be a lecture. You'll have a lecture that's pre-recorded and so that's what you're having here. I'm in an undisclosed location and I am recording this for you. I'm going to post it on the canvas and you'll be able to see it or review it at your own leisure. Of course there's going to be assignments and even an assessment attached to this recording and that's something that you also find often with pre-recorded lectures on Canvas. So now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and jump in. At this point, you all should be really comfortable with your essay number three about the Lax family. We've been working on comparison and contrast, and we've been working on some different ways of organizing comparison contrast papers. You should have a really good idea of who you want to compare, but not only that, you also should have a good idea of what you want to compare about them. So today I want to not talk about the technical aspects of writing a comparison contrast paper. I really want to focus on other aspects of the Gila story that could possibly enter into your papers and also into your consideration for your fourth and final paper for the semester. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the impact of the Gila cells and talk about some other aspects of um, the immortal life of Henrietta Lacks where you can utilize some of the skills that you've learned for comparison and contrast. Some of these things may actually make their way into the paper that you're writing now or they might be held in reserve for your next essay. Either way, I think it's important information that will help you fill out the um, conversation that you're beginning to build. One of the most important aspects of Rebecca Sloot's book is that she's able to reveal some of the ethical dilemmas that um, arose because of the way people treated the HeLa cells. I mean, whether it be issues with them taking the cells, how they were used, how they were distributed, how they were sold, who reaped the profits, who reaped the benefits, all of these issues are really worthy of exploration. But how do we begin processing these issues in a way that we can start to put them in our writing. Well, let's go ahead and think a little bit about that. One thing we need to keep in mind is that all of these things, all of this development with Henrietta and ourselves, it all started at John Hopkins Hospital. It all starts with the tension between being an institution that's supposed to heal people and yet also being an institution that's um, built towards research and science. You know, the ethics of an institution for healing and the ethics for science and research and ex experimentation aren't always in line with one another. And so that's an area of comparison too. The ethics of a hospital, of a doctor, versus the ethics of an experimental researcher. Those are points of comparison that can be made. Another issue happens to be how valuable Gila was. I mean, when you think about Gila, Gila was an essential ingredient for helping to stop polio. Um, it helped to um, create the final cultured cell that would allow the polio vaccine to be widely disseminated. Once people recognized the value of HeLa, it really changed the way uh, the biomedical uh, industry um, was built. And it really changed what people's expectations were for what it could do. So the value of HeLa continued to skyrocket. But what about the value of human subjects that were actually being experimented on? You know, did the values for how people treated those subjects, did, the, did that change? Did it go down? 
did it rise? That's another point of comparison. Again, we're just talking about other things that can be compared besides just the Lax family because there are things that happen to the Lax family that are examples of larger issues within the medical community that arose because of what was happening with Gila. And we don't want to forget about those. One thing we're going to talk a lot about for our last and final essay is the necessity to understand how cause and effect work together. And that's really what our last essay is going to revolve around, this notion of cause and effect. Um, whenever we think about causes, we think about why something happens. Whenever we think about effects, we think about, well, what are the consequences of particular things happening? And I think when we consider the demand for HeLa cells, it's a really good example of cause and effect. All right. Uh, before the HeLa cell, scientists had to experiment on monkeys, which was very expensive and ended up dying in the process. And HeLa cells were, um, they were incredibly durable. They reproduced really, really fast. They were inexpensive to grow. And it was perfect for testing. Right. So you could use HeLa cells to do lots of testing, and you could use them as a surrogate for um, either monkeys as test subjects or um, even human beings as test subjects. So we can definitely see how supply and dem demand work in this situation. But you could also use your skills in comparison and contrast to talk about this too, because you could compare how the medical establishment operated before the invention of Gila or the discovery of Gila and compare that to how the medical establishment operated after the discovery of Gila. Again, really good um, subject matter to utilize your comparison contrast skills. Let's keep moving. Some of you might be thinking, well, Professor, this is good information, but I don't really see yet how I can actually apply this to my current paper. And I understand that. The thing that I want you to understand in this particular lecture is that the ethical concerns of informed consent, of demand for HeLa, of um, changing medical procedures, all these things affected the Lax family too. That might not affect their reaction because these might be things that were operating in the background that the family members didn't actually know about. But there's still things that you can bring into your conversation when you write your paper. So this is from Oprah Magazine, and it's a little blurb about the Lax family. And it connects the issue of the demand for Gila to the Lax family experience. Let's take a look at it for a moment. While the profits of Gila sales piled up, the Lax family were struggling to stay afloat financially. When Henrietta's children learned of Gila, they were consumed with questions. Had scientists killed their mother to harvest her cells? Were clones of their mother walking the streets of cities around the world? And if Henrietta was so vital to medicine, why couldn't they afford health insurance? Today, in Baltimore, her family still wrestles with feelings of betrayal and fear, but also pride. So this paragraph helps to connect the issues of um, Gila economically to the real life struggles of the family. So we can see a bridge between the supply and demand issues and how the family experienced it. Now I know for some of you that might be a big conceptual leap, but it's the kind of connection that really helps to make academic essays work. It's not just about the personal, but also shows how the personal exemplifies what's happening in um, the, the larger world. We also had some conversations about different kinds of articles, academic articles, uh, scholarly articles, um, trade articles, and popular articles. And if this had to fit into a box, this would be considered a popular article, right? But it's a popular article that ties to um, more scholarly information. Now, one of the cool things about this is that the Lax family has a, a, a pretty strong presence in popular news. That last piece was from Oprah Magazine. You see CBS News um, did a story on 
the Lax family specifically around the issues of health insurance, even though they have this incredible legacy. And I'll drop the link to you right here so that you can see the link if you want to actually see the story and maybe even use the story. But the issues that permeate the book are also issues that um, the family struggle with too. So the whole notion of informed consent. You know, there's been issues around informed consent. Do research subjects recognize or know that they're being researched on and, and do they get the information? Have they actually been told? Do they know what, they really be, what they're really being exposed to? Those issues have happened for a very long time. They happened in Nazi Germany with the Nuremberg Codes. They uh, were an issue with the Tuskegee syphilis experiment that we talked about in class, right? And these issues are also present with the family themselves. So let's think about this for a second. First of all, we know that there's a historical uh, precedent for not informing research subjects that they're being researched on or what they're being researched for, what they're being researched on for. There's a historical precedent for that before Henrietta Lacks's um, death, right? And we know that that's changed today, but thinking about how it's changed and comparing what things were like then to what they are now, those are things that are worth exploring. I mean, there are different aspects to informed consent that even the family wrestle with. So look at these elements for informed consent for a moment. Disclosure is the very first one. Standard presentation of information to the patient or the research subject. One of the things that comes up in the conversation with the family is they have lots of questions about what information they were presented with as to what happened to Henrietta and also what happened in their own medical histories. Because after Henrietta's death, they were constantly getting calls from researchers for them to be researched on as well. Look at number three, voluntariness. Voluntary participation in treatment and research needed to ensure full autonomy in treatment or research. Full autonomy means you're in 100% control and knowledge of what you're doing. And that word is a weird one, voluntariness. It implies that there are different um, levels to being a volunteer. And those distinctions between those different levels might be a little blurry, especially for the research participant. So all of these are areas in which um, informed consent can be explored. I mean, you could explore it on topics like the Tuskegee syphilis study, which keeps coming up for us because it lasted so long and so many people didn't understand what this research was being used for, right? And here you'll see, and you can pause this at your leisure, some of the conflicts that they reached in the study. Again, the Tuskegee stu study serves as a model for what happened with Henrietta in a lot of ways. Even here, we have a chart, pros and cons to the HeLa cells. Again, another comparison which shows that when you take a case study of Henrietta Lacks, you see that the HeLa cells, they revolutionized the medical field, definitely. But it also shows some of the issues of informed consent that impacted the family. And those are some important concerns that you should concentrate on. Some of those concerns even have impacts in other areas of medical science that you might not think are related, but actually tie directly to this same issue such as the current controversy between childhood vaccinations, which also ties to this. So, here are some things that I want you to consider moving forward. For your assignment coming out of this uh, video, I'd like for you to look through the book, especially when Rebecca Scoot talks about the family, and see what are some examples that Scoot uses to show the reader the state of ethics in the medical industry. And she rather shows than tells. You know, what questions do her examples raise? And my second question for you to answer is, well, how do you think the Lax family should be compensated if you think that the Lax family should be compensated at all? All right? These questions will also be located in the Canvas module along with a short quiz and assessment of this video. If you have any questions, give me, send me an email or you can actually call me at the number that's attached to um, the module. Um, we'll talk again on Thursday, and I'll be willing to see you then. All right, have a good one.